Okay, September 2nd update. What have I done? Besides doing a lot of, I, I had to fix this uh, messaging. I had made some mistakes in there and I went through and I fixed the code. It wasn't giving me any results. Very small things. Then I revamped as I assistant. What I have done is I have gone in and I replaced Google Flan T5 with uh, Vicuna. That's, that's based on the Lama 2. LLM. I'm very much pleased with it because it provides almost GPT-4 quality results. And I've worked with uh, how it's going to be formatting and sending back the data. I have to rethink a lot of things because before I was relying on uh, the Google T-Flan T5, it was giving very small, very inconsequential results. So I had to do a little bit of magic with that, which I don't have to do with the Vicona because it gives back the results. This kind of opens up a big broad range of different things that I can do and my mind is just racing with all kinds of things of how I can integrate it with the, with the platform. Yes, it does take a little bit of time because it is running on my iMac and it's running on CPU mode only. But what I managed to do was, uh, there's a quantized version that actually and give you just a, a, an example right now. So before, when I was running the, the model that was a standard uh, transformer model, it would take a long time to kind of load up the weights and everything. But look at how fast this is. So I run it, so it's a quantized version. So almost instantly, let's see how long it takes now. Is the server up? Server's up, okay, that fast. And I'm able to get significantly long responses, as you can see. But it does take a little bit of time to load up. So if I said, for example, uh... so one of the other things that I need to do is I need to fix the, the return. When it's on a small screen, I think what I want to do is when I enlarge it, I want to give it more of a, let's say, a better input screen. So instead of having this small input space down here. I want to give it a larger space like it's happening on GPT-4. Not too much because people are going to be working behind and doing different things. So they're going to be working on different applications. And then of course, then also what I did is that every time I was closing it, I was just losing all the data. So I've created on the uh, local storage, I've created variables that could stay there so that when the person comes back, they can get back their data. Now I have two kinds of storage. I have one which is a current session storage, which takes uh, the currently active session. And then I've got to figure out some way to save the sessions in a uh, session log on their computer. And the reason behind that is that what I've seen from GPT, uh, from Google Bing and GPT-4, is that they're keeping your past sessions because you can go back to these. I really don't go back to those that much, but what I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about uh, combining that with something like what I did with the web search. So, okay, I didn't get a response back. So I had done something wrong. Boo hoo. Let's see what I did wrong. So I received that back. Mm -hmm. And it came back a little incorrect. So the query is right. Uh huh. But I gave I gave it context, so that confused it. So okay, I know what's wrong. So here I have context. So if I go up there, yeah, that set is context, right? Hmm. So setting that as context and saying who's the president in 1980 kind of screwed up, okay, who? Okay. No, let's go back and see. Okay, there's no context in that. So what I've done here is that typically, I guess it's quite difficult to understand if you want to keep context to what you were previously talking about and don't have to say again what the context is. I've made it so that you can click and use the context. When I see use as context, what I do is when I make a query, I go directly to the LLM model. If there's no context in there, it's going to pass through the as I AI server, which also uses. Now, uh, before what I was doing, I was attaching give a long uh, answer. So I removed that. So I said, who is, 
Before I was attaching that to everything, but sometimes you just want to get back a short answer. One of the reasons why I did that before is I had to do that with Google Flag T5 because what it was doing was, uh, if you didn't say that, it would always give you a really small answer. Sometimes you wanted something a little bit longer. And when you said, when you told it in a prompt to give a long answer, it rarely gave you a long answer. With this model, it works pretty much like uh, GPT-4. I don't know that if I were to go in and ask Jimmy Carter, yes, okay. So I got the long answer, okay. The President of the United States was Jimmy Carter. He's not graded 2019 to Trump, blah, 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 during his presidency, okay. And what did GPT-4 get? So let me use uh, this one, say, give me a long answer. Let's see. Of course, she knows how fast it is. And that's long, longer. Okay, let me go back and see here. Well, I'm very, very much pleased. So this is, this is really amazing. Now I can do a lot of things with uh, this type of uh, capability behind the scenes. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, so it gave me essentially the same thing, so it didn't make any difference at all, uh, saying give me a, a long answer with plenty of details, right. One of the other things I was thinking of doing, you, know, you notice I have steps, uh, data, lingo, summary. What I'm thinking about doing is removing steps and removing summary, because with the Google T Flan T5, you had to put in the prompt, give me steps, show me all the steps. And with summary, you had to put summarize, colon, and then ask for a summary of the document. With this model, you could just ask for it, either at the beginning or at the end of the document. That will allow me to put something else in the tab there that I was thinking of doing, because for example, if I say find on Wikipedia, That is there, it gave me a Wikipedia page, so that is not formatted, so it gave me a recipe. So this is formatted. So what I do is I usually keep, I, I create a format for whatever it is that, that you have in the background. So this is part of a database, and this should have come back formatted, but I think what I've done there is I have, I have a keyword that I use, that I, that, I, that I save here. For example, let's go to uh, an app. Here's the app, this is the code. What I've had to add uh, to this is I had to add a flag to tell whether to reformat it or not. Because I had here, the update format. Because what I had is that when I went to the LLM, it was giving me carriage returns. And typically what I'm doing is I'm using, I'm reformatting with HTML. Well, in the case of my Azai AI, I always send back the HTML. And as you see, what happened there was this is HTML, but uh, it passed through this particular formatter, which ruined the HTML, so it comes out like this. I could, I could easily fix that, and it'll come out properly formatted with pictures and everything like that. But in this case, since it's ruined the HTML, what I see it what I see that I can do, I can make a query for a database, for example, I can make a query for a database, and um, then I can pass that information off onto the LLM and make a query so it can query that data. So I think I'm gonna be doing that. So when you go into an application, for example, if we went into the calendar, I could put an entry field here so that you so that you know that you're querying the date, the calendar, or I could make a, for example, when you pop into to a particular thing, I can change the tabs here so that you can make queries. So I'm debating on that might not be so obvious because you wouldn't see that, but you definitely see uh, an entry field where you can figure out, you know, make a query based on the based on the data. So I'm debating whether to have all of the queries based on the app here, and then I want to add another button here that'll make it go on the side so that you'll have basically it'll just move the screen in, and you'll have on the side you have the way to call back some of your other queries and then review them. And here's basically what I want to do. I have this up here, which is uh, it's kind of a new, unique type of a search. So if I said, for example, uh, messaging, what this does, all these blocks are built with the JSON. So if I say tools, it'll go through and it'll pick up based on similarity and it'll tell you where you can go and it'll 
take you directly there. So I can do something like this with return information on people's queries so that you can query things that you've already done. Now, I haven't seen that ChatGPT or any of these uh, others are doing that, but they're giving you over here on the left-hand side. Do they do that? Can you query? No. Today, I don't see any query here. So what would be neat is to have a way that you know that you've gone over something, you want to query it and get that information. So if I go to Bard, you don't have new chat experiments. So if you don't have that, you, you can't query it. And I, the same is true, let's see if that's the same is true with B. So if I go back to B, let me go back to my chats, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so no, you can't query it. Now what would be neat is to be able to query all of your previous correspondence or, or conversations. So that's kind of what I will do. I'll make it so that you can pop it down and maybe I can have, um, once I lose this tab, get rid of this steps tab, because I don't need that anymore, and I don't need summary. I could have history tab, and history tab is going to come up with all the history. It's got a search bar on the top, and it's going to do similarly to what I did with uh, the website. I think that will be quite good. And then you click that, and then it'll bring it back. It'll bring back that history back into your... And I want to kind of clean this up a little bit so that, okay, this gives you uh, like a tablet view. But like I said, on the bottom here, I want to make a bigger space where you can type and do things. Right now, if you type something, 14 members. And I'm also doing something else, for example. If I click member data, you'll notice that I've lost the information about the 14 members. So what I want to do now is I want to keep the information that has been returned. For example, what is the area of a circle? So here it comes up with a formula, and it gives you like a little diagram there. So if I said the radius is five, okay, calculate, oh, okay, now it gives me this result. Now if I ask for something else, okay, you notice that the information that I had previously about the circle is gone. So what I want to do, instead of removing that and replacing that, I will just remove the form itself. Keep the image in the latex there. Remove the calculate format button, but if it has a response, leave it there. So that way, if a person had a calculation and they wanted to find out something, that they'd come back to it. And back to ideas now for, for what am I going to use this new LLM for? I'll be replacing this with the commercial version of La Lama 2 from Facebook, and I'll be using that instead, but uh, I'll wait till that is quantized, and then I'll be able to use that. But I could imagine, for example, if we go into in the inventory management, I can do one or two ways. Like I said before, I remove steps, and I put in their uh, inventory management or something like that so they will know that that is there. Or what I can do is I can have a field up here, an input field, where you can have an input field and ask certain things. But this might be better because it could pop up something like this. And then you'll click what it is that you want and it's going to come back and give you that information very quickly. And then if you keep it, click keep his context and ask a question, then you're going to get back even more information. Anyway, that's what I've been working on. And, uh, and I also made uh, some video shorts. I made two or three video shorts. And I took a small break. That's why there's a little bit of time between this and that. So, uh, please subscribe and follow me as I kind of venture and figure out. I'll do more, uh, some more videos on, let's see what will I do next. Maybe I will go over, uh, I'll go over messaging in more detail of what I'm doing with the, what I'm doing with the messaging, how it works. I'd like to point out that this, app, that this, uh, this application is um, its a community of communities because this application, you can have multiple communities. You can use it as a community or as a single individual business. Or let me give you an example. You could have a, an area where you have different kinds of cooperatives or different kinds of businesses and each of them can have their own account on the ASI platform. For example, let's say somebody deploys the ASI platform, they call it something else. They call it, for example, Kansas Community Platform. 
and there could be various businesses they come in and they will pick what kind of services they want if they're maybe doing inventory. This operations will have lots of different kinds of uh, applications in there for different kinds of businesses as we go along. They can select what they want. So it could be a community of communities. I haven't seen anything out there like that. There are lots of applications that serve a community, but they're single applications with single purpose. And I think this could be quite valuable for, for small businesses and for cooperatives that need to have control over their own data. So I'm signing off for now. To help support this project, please subscribe and like. Change, 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 change.